NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman has just announced, I met with SpaceX and Blue Origin to understand the latest plans to accelerate NASA's Artemis timeline. So far, progress from both contractors has raised some serious questions. SpaceX continues development of Starship HLS while Blue Origin advances work on the Blue Moon Lunar Lander. Yet timelines, readiness, and execution remains uncertain. Now is the moment to review where each program truly stands. Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. As we know, begin Beginning with Artemis 3, humans are scheduled to land on the moon once again. More precisely, this mission represents the long-awaited return of human explorers to the lunar surface after more than half a century. As the target date draws closer, concerns naturally continue to grow. Technical complexity, at the same time, it's worth acknowledging that NASA has achieved a notable series of successes in recent years. Much of this momentum is being attributed to the agency's current administrator, Jared Isaacman, whose leadership style has been described as energetic, direct, and strongly focused on execution. Since taking office, Isaacman has been actively involved in advancing NASA's major programs, particularly those tied to the Artemis Initiative. When it comes to the Moon program specifically, Isaacman has consistently expressed determination and optimism. Optimism. This confidence was made clear during a recent exchange in which he was asked whether American astronauts could realistically return to the moon by 2028, a goal previously outlined by President Trump. Isaacman's response was brief and unambiguous. He answered, yes. That statement was not presented as vague reassurance or political messaging. It was followed by concrete action. Shortly afterward, Isaacman publicly confirmed that he had personally visited both SpaceX and Blue Origin to review their progress and to better understand their plans for accelerating the Artemis timeline. He shared this update on X along with an image that appeared to show him working directly at facilities associated with both companies. In his public remarks, Isaacman emphasized the importance of these partnerships by stating, the capabilities these two partners are pioneering will be essential to returning NASA astronauts to the lunar surface, establishing an enduring presence, and advancing American leadership on the moon and beyond. That phrasing is particularly important because it highlights not only a return mission, but also a long-term strategy. The reference to an enduring presence stands out. It suggests that NASA is not simply aiming to repeat past achievements, but to fundamentally change how humans operate on and around the moon. In that context, the capabilities of the chosen landers become critical. This emphasis strongly favors SpaceX and its Starship human landing system. Because of its size and overall design philosophy, Starship offers capabilities that traditional lunar landers can not easily match. It's designed to transport very large amounts of cargo to the lunar surface along with crew. This approach enables the delivery of habitats, scientific equipment, and infrastructure in fewer missions. For this reason, Isaacman's statement can be interpreted in two important ways. First, it strongly implies that Starship HLS remains on track and is expected to meet its role in the planned missions. Second, it reinforces the idea that SpaceX will maintain its position as the primary lander provider for Artemis 3. At present, no detailed images from Isaacman's visit to SpaceX facilities have been publicly released, particularly from locations associated with Starship HLS production. However, given the timing and the level of public interest, it seems increasingly likely that official images or updates will be shared in the near future. The program is now at a stage where transparency can help build confidence rather than undermine it. It's also worth recalling that several important details about Starship HLS have already emerged through testing activities in 2024 and 2025. Among these were images from inside the airlock corridor, which provided rare insight into the internal layout of the vehicle. Additional testing milestones observed or reported during this period included elevator system tests, airlock hardware demonstrations, and other structural and mechanical evaluations. In a major update released in late 2025, SpaceX announced that it had completed as many as 49 milestones related to its lunar contract. SpaceX also outlined its forward plans for 2026, which included several critical milestones tied to orbital refilling operations. Refilling is one of the most challenging aspects of the Starship architecture, and it's essential for enabling deep space missions including lunar landings. Beyond these technical milestones, SpaceX leadership has repeatedly emphasized the goal of a permanent or semi-permanent human presence on the moon. This long-term vision closely matches Isaacman's own language and priorities. Additional insights into Starship HLS have come from internal diagrams and presentations that illustrate the crew
crew payload area. These materials suggest that the two-stage structure remains a central feature of the design with separate ascent and descent elements integrated into the overall vehicle architecture. Looking ahead, the coming year is likely to bring several major revelations related to Starship HLS. Two key goals stand out. The first is the expected public unveiling of a Starship HLS prototype. This would likely include direct images and official confirmation of the milestones SpaceX has already completed. The second major of progress will involve orbital refilling operations. Unlike some aspects of the program that remain behind closed doors, refilling requires visible flight demonstrations. These missions are expected to take place later this year. Supporting evidence can already be seen in hardware modifications, such as the addition of refilling interface points on Ship 39, which strongly suggests active preparation. There's also ample reason to believe that SpaceX's leadership team remains deeply committed to the lunar program. Gwen Shotwell has repeatedly addressed Starship HLS progress in discussions with NASA leadership, including former Administrator Sean Duffy. Elon Musk, who is often criticized for prioritizing Mars over the moon, has also made multiple public statements reaffirming SpaceX's lunar ambitions. Late last year, Musk stated SpaceX will lean in big on the moon. He has also repeatedly discussed concepts such as mass drivers on the moon, which would support long-term industrial activity. This year alone, he has referenced lunar goals on multiple occasions. On New Year's Day, in a post celebrating a record year for SpaceX, he wrote, Well done, SpaceX team, on a record year. We grow ever closer to the moon and Mars. In another exchange, when someone described Starbase as the gateway to Mars, Musk replied, and the moon, clearly signaling, continued focus. To make all of this possible, SpaceX must perfect several core Starship capabilities this year. These include achieving consistent orbital insertion, deploying payloads successfully, and executing two-stage landings. The company must also demonstrate key upgrades associated with the version 3 design. Only after these steps are complete can full-scale preparation for lunar missions begin, including uncrewed landing demonstrations and sustained refilling operations. Given the progress outlined so far, along with strong confirmation and institutional support, the question naturally arises. Do you have confidence in SpaceX and Starship to deliver Artemis 3 and support the broader moon program? This is a question many observers are now asking. Turning to Blue Origin, NASA's second lunar lander contractor, the picture is different, but equally significant. Significant. Blue Origin was included in Jared Isaacman's recent visits, and images released from the tour show the NASA administrator viewing the Blue Moon Mark I lander through a large facility window. Based on available visuals, Blue Moon Mark I appears largely complete and is believed to be in final testing ahead of an early year launch on the third New Glenn mission. Blue Origin confirmed this progress in a public statement noting that the lander served as a backdrop during preparations for acoustic testing. CEO Dave Limp provided further detail, describing the completion of direct field acoustic testing as a major flight qualification milestone. The fully integrated lander was encircled by 34-foot speaker towers that generated a near-diffuse acoustic field, replicating the sound environment inside the new Glen fairing and exceeding 138 decibels. During the test, the lander operated in a flight-like configuration. Its tanks were pressurized with helium and nitrogen. Onboard batteries powered the vehicle, and all avionics and guidance systems were active. 43 triaxial accelerometers recorded the lander's response during a two-minute exposure at proto-qualification levels. LIMP noted that because acoustic loads dominate the vibration environment, this method replaces traditional shaker testing and more accurately reflects real ascent conditions. Looking ahead, LIMP confirmed that the lander's next major milestone will be thermal vacuum testing at NASA's Johnson Space Center, a critical step in validating readiness for spaceflight. Most visible progress however, remains focused on cargo. The critical question is the status of its crewed lander, where future variants such as Mark 1.5 or Mark 2 will be decisive. Sustained demonstrable progress on these designs is essential for any credible role in crewed lunar landings. Under prior leadership, Blue Origin had the opportunity to compete directly with SpaceX for Artemis 3. Whether that opportunity continues under Isaacman's administration remains uncertain. Regardless of policy decisions, a crewed lunar 
prototype must show tangible advancement this year to support any realistic mission timeline. Taken together, these developments underscore the urgency surrounding the lunar program. Isaacman has been explicit about the stakes, stating, To meet President Trump's national space policy objectives, we will challenge every requirement, clear every obstacle, remove every blocker, and empower the team to deliver, and we will do it with time to spare. The statement reflects determination and signals an intent to land a crewed mission within the current presidential term. While words alone do not guarantee success, they set expectations and establish accountability. There is reason for cautious optimism. Compared to periods marked by delays in cost growth, the current approach appears more focused and coordinated. One of Isaac Mint's most consequential shifts may be his emphasis on unity, not only between NASA and industry, but among contractors themselves. Support Supportive oversight can often achieve more than constant obstruction. SpaceX illustrates this clearly. In 2023 and 2024, environmental reviews and regulatory delays repeatedly slowed Starship testing. Conditions improved markedly in 2025 following FAA reforms and broader governmental support for commercial launch activity. If this environment endures, companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin will be better positioned to scale rapidly, focusing on execution rather than bureaucracy. The urgency is further further sharpened by international competition. China continues to advance steadily in launch systems, spacecraft, and lunar lander development with stated goals that include crewed lunar landings, South Pole operations, and a moon base in cooperation with Russia. While the U.S. retains key advantages, they cannot be assumed to last without accelerated progress. This is now the most critical phase of preparation for the next era of lunar exploration. Leadership attention has returned at the right moment, and contractors are showing tangible momentum. In the months ahead, further clarity is likely as crewed missions draw closer. For now, all focus remains on the work underway. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.